Hey guys, today we are going to learn the difference between male squash blossoms and female squash blossoms. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Our Stony Acres. Welcome to our YouTube channel. While you're here, please make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you get notice every time we release new videos. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the difference between male blossoms and female blossoms in the squash family, okay? And I've actually wanted to do this video for a little while now, but I decided to wait till the end of the season because we've got frost coming in just a few days and I know now that any blossoms that are left on my squash plants are not gonna make it. And uh, so I can sacrifice a few for you guys to see uh, how things work on the actual plants. So I'm kind of excited to do this video. I hope it works out. I'm gonna try and do some close-ups for you so that you guys can see uh, what these, these uh, flowers look like and hopefully you can tell the difference and, and kind of figure it out, okay? So first off, let's talk about, there's two different types of, of flowers in the plant world, okay? So we have a perfect flower or an imperfect flower. And a perfect flower uh, comes from you know, actually most of the flowers in your vegetable garden are going to be considered perfect flowers. So a perfect flower has both the male and the female parts inside the flower. So they're self-pollinating. That means that, that they, they really don't need bee pollination. They're usually wind pollination or vibration pollinated. And, uh, and so it's, it's less important for you to have bees in those situations. And that flower in and of itself can produce fruit. Um, so it doesn't need any outside influence. Um, and per examples of perfect flowers would be things like tomatoes, beans, peas, all of those have perfect flowers. Um, and so they, they actually are self-pollinating and uh, there will be some occasional bee pollination in all of those plants. But for the most part, Everything that needs to happen, happens inside that flower, okay? So that's a perfect flower. Then we have what's called an imperfect flower. And most of the imperfect flowers that we have in the vegetable kingdom will actually show up in the squash family. So we're talking about things like um, cucumbers and summer squash and winter squashes, even melons, all of those are in the same family and uh, you will find that all of those have imperfect flowers. And so what that means is you have two different flowers. So you have a male flower and a female flower, and you can see they look dramatically different. This happens to be a zucchini flower. Both of these are zucchini flowers. And uh, so we have the male parts in this flower and the female parts in this flower. And so there has to be pollination. So either the bees have got to do it or you've got to do it manually, okay? And uh, we can talk a little bit about that, although that's kind of a video, you know, a topic for a whole other video. So let's uh, go out in the garden and uh, we'll sit down in front of the zucchini plant and talk a little bit more about these flowers and, you know, the parts that are there and how you can tell the difference. All right, guys, so we're out in the garden now in front of my zucchini plant, which amazingly, even though it's October, is still alive because we haven't had any frost yet, which is really nice. I chose zucchini because zucchini has really big flowers. And so I'm able to kind of show you the contrast between the two flowers. And also hopefully we can get the camera to focus here and we'll actually show you some of the parts. So first off, let's talk about, remember there's male, male flowers and female flowers and each one of those has different parts in it. So um, this is a male flower, okay? And uh, you can see it's longer and uh, a little bit showier too. This one actually is it already closed up for the day, but we're gonna open it up so that you can see inside. Let's see if we can focus this guy in really quick here. Um, you can see inside that flower. Uh, inside the male flower is what is called the anther, okay? And that is where the pollen is. And so the bees will collect the pollen. So let's do this. We're gonna take this little Q-tip here and rub it on the anther. And then you guys can see the pollen that um, hopefully that focuses. Let's go a little bit closer there too and see um, if that will focus for us. Okay, um, and then let me just, uh, since we're, we're doing this and this flower's already gone, let's open it all the way up so that you guys can see. So if we pull this back, this is the anther of the flower. And, and so that's where the pollen is and again, if we take our Q-tip here and rub on this, you can see that the pollen comes off on the Q-tip. 
So that's the, that's the male pollen, okay? So this pollen has to get to the female flower, okay? So now let's look at the female flower. And we're gonna open this gal up here and so that you guys can see inside. So inside the female flower, we have what is called a stigma, okay? And uh, that is this right here. And the, the, the stigma is these little parts and the bees are then going to take the pollen and they're going to get the pollen on this guy right here and uh, that will then uh, pollinate the fruit okay so that's the let's see if we can get that to focus hopefully that focuses in for you guys there um, that is the female parts so we've got the male flower and the female flower uh, that's what they look like from the inside um, I, I just i love this i think it's super interesting so hopefully you guys too do too. So when the bees travel inside the female flower, that male pollen sticks to the stigma and that's what pollinates the flower. Okay, so now we're over here in front of our pumpkin trellis and you guys can see we're doing really well here. I wanted to take a minute and, and talk to you about how you can tell the difference between a male flower and a female flower. I, Honestly, with some of the bigger fruits, it's pretty easy. You saw with the zucchini, you, you could see the difference. Um, and the main difference is that you've got just a flower on the male flower, and it usually has a long stem that holds it up, okay? And uh, male flowers are usually a little more showy as well. And uh, with the female flower, and this one, the, the flower's already kind of dried off, but you have a fruit, okay? So behind the female flower, you will always have a fruit. So, that's how you tell the difference. Now, with pumpkins and zucchini and all of the winter squashes, it's fairly easy to tell the difference. It's a little bit harder with some of the ones that have smaller flowers. So things like melons, uh, cantaloupes, cucumbers, all of those, it's a little bit harder to tell. But if you really get down there and look, those have much smaller flowers. But if you really get down and look, you'll have a male flower and a female flower and the female flower will have fruit behind it. So here's the flower, here's the fruit. Um, so that is how you basically tell the difference. So let me just do, a, I've got some pictures here that we took this summer. Let me take a few, uh, a second here and I can show you. So here's, this is a, a melon, watermelon. And uh, then we've got uh, some cantaloupe here and then cucumbers. And then of course we've got zucchini. Um, and you can see those female flowers have the fruit behind them. Okay, so that's how you tell the difference. A female flower has the fruit. Now, one little tweak of nature, one thing that, that, that Mother Nature does is most plants have predominantly male flowers. If you look, and I don't know how much you can see here in the video, but this, it's late in the season, but you know, this bush or this vine is covered in flowers and 95% of them are male. In fact, let's see. Okay, so look right here. Um, and again, we've got frost, so I really don't care. All of these are here. Let's just do this again. We can pull this off and you guys will hopefully find this interesting if I can make it focus. Um, so look at all of these flowers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then another cluster right here starting. So six or seven flowers on this plant and all of them are male flowers except for this one. So if you see that flower right there, it has a little fruit behind it, so that's a female flower. And again, I don't, it, it's so late in the year, I, there's no way that's ever gonna grow into a pumpkin, so that's why I sacrificed this one to show you guys. So most of the time, there will be predominantly male flowers on a plant, and that is because they're showier and it attracts the bees and other pollinators, and so it gives, you know, the plant a better chance of actually producing fruit to have all of those male flowers. The bees like those, they're covered in pollen, and so they want to come, and, and so you're going to see that. And especially early in the season, you may get really frustrated because maybe the first two or three weeks, your plant will have nothing but male flowers. It'll just have male flowers. And again, that's by design because it attracts the bees and the bees get used to coming to check out and get pollen from there and then all of a sudden the female flowers start to show up and then they start to produce and and so 
watch out for that. But I just, I love the fact that, um, that we get to see these imperfect flowers and how they work and uh, that, it, that it's so easy to, to do that. And uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and that you learned a little bit. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave those down in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell so that you get noticed every time we release a new video. Okay, that's all I have for you for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy gardening. Hey guys, I just wanna say thank you for watching this YouTube video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got a lot of good information out of it. How was your garden this year? Did you struggle a little bit? Did you have some problems? Uh, were you new to gardening? Are you just now thinking about starting a garden? Well, I wanna help you. And the best way that I can help you to become a better gardener is to have you join the Gardening Academy. So the Gardening Academy is our monthly membership service where we provide weekly content to help you become a better gardener. And now is a great time to join because we've been going for over a year, which means the site is loaded with tons of great gardening content. On top of all of the content that's there, we also have a, a monthly Q&A session where you guys can ask me questions, and uh, it's just a great place to be and a great place to learn about gardening. There's a link down in the description below. You can click on that. It'll teach you more about it, and I would really love to have you be a part of the Gardening Academy. So please join. Click the link below. Thanks, guys. Happy gardening.